Under the new eligibility requirements announced today, your YouTube channel training reviews is no longer eligible for monetization because it doesn't meet the new threshold. Son of a- Now I'm just going to read out a paragraph from a blog on the YouTube creators page. It mentions here, we're making changes to address the issues that affected our community in 2017 so that we can prevent bad actors from harming the inspiring and original creators around the world who make their living on YouTube. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Now I understand there's a lot of people on YouTube who are making videos maybe once a month, once every three months and they want to monetize their videos. And I understand as a brand you want to be able to advertise your adverts on channels that are going to be getting the most engagement from their users. Now, if I was a brand, I wouldn't want to put my ads on a channel that is posting once every couple of months and someone who doesn't really post useful content and is consistently maybe uploading copyrighted content and such. Now, I get that, but with YouTube, putting the threshold so high, it makes it harder for newcomers to even think about joining the whole YouTube partner program. And this is not really helping by saying we're preventing bad actors from joining the game. Well, you could be a professional actor, you could have all of the YouTube equipment, you could be doing everything right, and it could still take you a year, two years, or even three years to hit that threshold. So why are you making it a little bit more difficult to actually achieve that? Now, if you listen here, this is Tom from uh, YouTube Creator Insider. Let's have a listen to see what he has to say about the reasons behind why the changes are happening. In order to join the YouTube Partner Program, um, you will now need at least a thousand subs and 4,000 hours of watch time in the last year. And the reason for that is we really want to reward the creators who are having the most impact on the platform, creating the most value for viewers, and also make it harder for spammers and abusers who create these very uh, small channels, quickly kind of try and exploit the system, and then um, make it hard for all of the good actors to, um, to succeed. This will allow us to focus more resources on channels that are really making a long-term investment in the platform and are creating content that engages with viewers uh, and are the best match for, for brand advertisers. Okay, so I understand what he's saying. He wants to get rid of the spam accounts on YouTube and not have any of the low-level, non-existent kind of people trying to make a, a living on YouTube because they're not making a, any impact on, on the whole YouTube game. But how many people does that affect? Well, let's listen to Tom and see how many it affects. Now, when you're you're probably wondering like, whoa, you know, that seems like a lot of channels will be affected. You know, with these new higher thresholds, 99% of those channels that are going to be removed were making less than $100 a year, and 90% of them were making less than $2.50 a month. So our expectation is that um, anybody that's in the program for whom YouTube is you know, their livelihood or a huge part of their livelihood, um, they won't be affected. Uh, it will mainly affect much smaller channels who, you know, will still be eligible once they meet these thresholds. So if you're removed from the program, it's not like you're removed from monetization forever. It means, hey, we'd love to see a little bit more data, a little more history on this channel, a little more impact on viewers before it joins the YPP program. Wrong because I started my YouTube channel about five months ago and I have made roughly around $80 from the monetization and he's mentioned here that the channels that are being removed from monetization they are earning less than $100 in the whole year or less than $2.50 per month now I've earned more than that and I'm trying hard to consistently upload videos every week and I'm doing it professionally I have all the uh, right YouTube equipment and I'm not spamming and this is something I do want to continue working on so for them to email me to say I'm not eligible for monetization anymore that sort of contradicts what Tom is saying now I'll put a link in the description below you can watch the full video of what Tom is saying and an update to what the questions of the users are asking him about this uh, threshold update as well and see what you guys think 
Now, I understand this is happening. We can't change that. That's it's going to happen and it's going to stop a lot of people from creating content and, you know, eventually getting uh, paid for all of their videos that they put on YouTube. But there's some ways that you can try to push and help grow your channel and actually get to that point in that threshold so you can start earning money. And I've got six tips to help you do that. First one, I would recommend to invest in good equipment. So I'm using a Canon 200D. I have a good microphone, I've got the lighting, I've got the atmosphere, the backgrounds are really important. Um, so all of the equipment that makes your videos look good, I definitely recommend you invest in them. Number two, you should definitely upload videos regularly. Now if you're just uploading videos once a month, I think that's not enough. You need to consistently keep pushing, you need to give your audience something to look forward to and to stay engaged very often. If you upload once every couple of months, most of the time people are going to end up forgetting about you and you're not going to be able to engage them as you would if you upload once a week, twice a week and consistently and, and you have to stay active. So that's a really good point and I'm also trying to do the same. Number three. I would stick to a consistent topic. For example, if you have a channel like myself doing reviews, I would continue uploading videos of just reviews. I wouldn't mix it up with random vlogs of your holidays, for example, because it doesn't match what you're trying to push across. If you're a singer, upload uh, your covers. If you're doing into beauty and makeup, all your videos should be about beauty and makeup. It shouldn't be about random things in the middle of your beauty and makeup videos because it, it you're targeting a specific audience you don't want to sway away from that and get them interested or uninterested in different things number four make sure you don't upload copyrighted material so don't put any music in the background of your videos that belong to different artists which you do not own the rights for make sure you don't wear branded t-shirts which you don't have the right to present in your videos so things like that just make sure you don't have anything copyrighted because in part of the YouTube Partner Program mentions if any of your videos have been hit with a copyright claim you may also be affected by the monetization rules and they could stop monetizing you completely if you consistently do that. Number five is to promote. Always try and promote your videos. When you've uploaded some you need to get the views, you need to get the watch times for this threshold because 4,000 hours is quite a long time. So promote on your social media, share it with your friends, share it with your family. If you're on forums, you're talking to people, give them recommendations on different tips or things that you're trying to promote on your videos. Share the link and try to get it out to as many people as you can because ultimately you need to get the views and that's the best way to do that. In addition, I recommend at the end of your videos, always engage the audience and ask them to subscribe because you want them to take away an action from your videos as well. Not to simply give them some information and then they disappear and then they come back after they're looking for some other information and coincidentally they find your video again. So try to promote at the end of each of your videos to like and subscribe and comment. That way you keep them interested and you show that you really care and you want them to follow you. Number six, the last one I would recommend is collaboration. If you can, find other YouTubers that are roughly around the same number of subscribers as you and try to see if you can collaborate with them. So you can probably meet them and join one of their videos or get them to come and be part of your videos and try to see if you can share the resources and share the love effectively. And they can also send across some of their subscribers to you uh, and so forth. So it's a good way to keep marketing yourself and growing that audience and hopefully getting to the threshold that YouTube Partner Program is eventually asking you to do. So guys, I hope that helps. I'm going to put some important links about this uh, update from YouTube in the description box below. If you did like the video, then uh, do give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments about this whole update on the uh, YouTube Partner Program and what you guys think. And I will see you at the next video. Take care.